Hello there! I haven't posted anything in a while. Just wanted to say that I'm still alive and kicking, and recently I've been goofing around with brilliant, easy to use, open source game engine Godot. And I've been studying Judy script and Godot engine quirks, and made some prototypes of little 2D games and whatnot, been doing loads of tutorials and etc. And having some experience with Unreal Engine, I decided to lay my hands on the 3D aspect of this beautiful and very flexible open source engine. And of course I want to start big, right? And do everything that a solo developer enthusiast being told not to do. Make an open world game. Okay, it's improbable to make a Morrowind clone for me, but at least try to do something in 3D with a third person character and open world maps. So this is my log of the first thing that I've tried to do after implementing a simple, temporary, janky, third person controls and a camera for my game. The controls are very rudimental. So please, disregard that. So, as you might have already noticed, the topic of this video will be the making of an open world level using Blender sculpting capabilities. I know, right? Why would you use Blender or any other digital content creation tool for this task, you might ask? And if you're proficient with Godot, you probably would use something like Zillan's Heightmap Terrain plugin for this game engine, which is really awesome and you should probably use it because it's highly likely more optimized than my solution in the video. But really all I wanted is to experiment a little bit and have more sculpting control and store my mesh in Blender and also I most probably will do some mistakes along the way here and there but bear with me as I also will be implementing a simple LOD or level of detail script and will utilize splat map shader using GLSL script with five different sets of texture maps per mesh having albedo, normal and roughness texture maps and having the ability to control the scale of every texture set. So you might find it useful anyways, or might not. Without further ado, let's move on with this one. Okay, here's what we're going to cover. The first one is terrain mesh and chunk creation technique in Blender with different levels of LOD using multi-resolution modifier. Then we're going to set up separate splat map textures for each terrain mesh chunk and paint them. And then talk briefly about workflow of generating PBR textures for our terrain. Third, we're going to export mesh into Godot editor and code a simple level of detail script to make use of different mesh chunks that we have created in Blender. And fourth, we're going to coat the splat map shader and apply it to each terrain chunk so that it would get the final look in game. I wanted to specify what we're not going to cover here. First is player movement controls. We're not going to also talk about uh, the water shader and the basics of working with the interface of Godot Engine. Sorry, this is more of a time-lapse video with my commentaries so that you could follow the general train of thought and workflow. And of course I'll be sharing all the scripts both for LOD system and splat map shader and we'll post a download link in the video description below. Let's start with terrain mesh chunk creation. The overall idea behind this is to make a mesh in Blender so that we could reuse it, make sculpting changes inside Blender and have a very light blend file. Using this technique we will also be able to paint splat maps directly in Blender and afterwards we are going to use them further on in our game. To achieve all of the above mentioned things we will use multi-resolution modifier. What you can see on the screen is me making a plane and then scaling it all the way up and then assigning a blue material to it so that it would represent the sea level. I am going to use that sea level as a guide during the sculpting process. Afterwards I took another plane. This will be our terrain mesh that we're going to sculpt on and modify as we go. After applying multi-resolution modifier, you can go to edit mode and extrude it into different chunks in its lowest subdivision level. I ended up having a mesh with 5 tiles extruded as height and width. Overall, 1 square kilometer in space. I've assigned a separate material to every chunk and named it accordingly in the material tab. This has been done so that every separate chunk will have its own material, hence its own UV coordinates and texture map that would represent different types of terrain. The process of sculpting terrain with multi-resolution modifier applied is pretty straightforward and you just subdivide mesh in the modified tab and sculpt as you go and make necessary changes. If you need more chunks, as I have already explained, you can always extrude the plane in the edit mode and sculpt afterward. After I've finished sculpting terrain mesh, I've started painting rough splat map in the texture editing mode. 
Having different materials assigned on every terrain chunk allows you to utilize multiple texture maps. You have to make sure that every chunk has its own material with its own diffuse texture. If you're not familiar with the notion of splat maps, it's basically a method of combining different textures. Texture map with red, green and blue colors that our shader will use to project different sets of tileable textures that will have albedo, normal map and roughness maps. This method is commonly used in terrain rendering in computer games to optimize the use of textures. After I've finished painting my preliminary splat map textures, I exported this test version of my terrain geometry and textures out to test whether materials will get applied automatically upon export to Collada file format. A file format that is currently most commonly used in Godot engine for 3D objects. Luckily, everything worked perfectly. To make the level of detail system work properly upon exporting it to Godot game engine, I have duplicated and separated final geometry into different collections, depending on its respective level of detail number within the Blender scene. Each collection had a name, LOD0, LOD1, LOD2 and LOD3. What is great about multi-resolution modifier is that you can actually separate your mesh in edit mode and the separated chunk of mesh will retain its properties given by the multi-resolution modifier. This way you can create multiple levels of terrain in Blender, which is super awesome in my opinion. It is also essential to note how important proper naming convention is. I have named the chunks as follows. Chunk 1001 LOD0, Chunk 1001 LOD1 and Chunk 1001 LOD2 and Chunk 1 Zero, zero, 001, LOD3, and so on. It's very important to have similar naming convention for each terrain chunk, because we're going to sort them all out and use their respective names in the level of detail system script in Godot Engine that I'm going to discuss in detail in a second. Upon exporting the mesh chunks with different LOD levels, I ended up with a long list of nodes in Godot Engine. Unfortunately, this stage required some manual work. I have manually created a static body and a collision shape node for every uh, mesh chunks with the naming convention of LOD0. Let's talk a bit about LOD system. The way it functions is pretty simple. Let me give you an example. Here, we have the sphere object and it has different levels of detail represented by different geometrical objects. The further away the player moves from the object, the lower the geometry will be rendered in the scene. As the player moves closer to the object, the more polygon heavy object will be rendered. Now that we looked at the visual representation of the LOD system, let's look at the script itself. And here's a script, and it's extremely simple. First what I do is I declare distance variables for different levels of detail. Here you can see variable distance equals 0, distance 01 equals 10, and so on. Then I declare update interval values, so that the script would send the signal checking player's position with a certain delay. This will allow us to save up some memory. In ready function, we are updating interval calculation and turning the visibility of geometry the way we want to. In my case, by default, the geometry called sphere LOD00 will be turned on by default. Then, in physics process, we update our counter with delta, and then if the counter has a bigger value than update interval, we run the function called update LOD, and the function update LOD is quite simple. What it does, it calculates the distance from the object's origin to origin of the player within the scene, and then it checks if the distance less or bigger than the values declared in distance variables. After comparing the distance, it shows the appropriate object. Now let's jump to the scene with our world terrain. Here it is. And here's the structure of the terrain scene that I've mentioned previously. Every chunk with LOD0 has its own static body and collision shape so that the player could walk on it. Let's jump into the script with our world terrain. Here we can observe the same principle that we had with the example with spheres. First, I've declared initial distance value for each chunk, which is set to zero. Then I've declared different distance levels. We have here three distance levels. Then, just like before, we have values for updating intervals. In ready function, we are turning the default visibility off and on for each geometry node and then 
In physics process, we are running our timer and functions that will send signal comparing distance from player to the origin of each chunk of geometry and it will be updating uh, this geometry depending on the relative distance to the player. It's basically the same script, just a bit larger because there are way more geometrical objects in the world terrain scene. And I wanted to mention that I will provide a link for downloading both example scripts in the video description so you could read through them. After sorting out how LOD system will work, I started writing the GLSL script for shader for the overall terrain. Speaking about the splat map shader, I'm not an expert on this one and didn't have any prior experience writing GLSL shaders before attempting to code this splat map shader. Mostly this script is an accumulation of scripts I found on different Godot related forum threads. I tried it and it seemed to work for me. Let's take a look at it. It's pretty straightforward. In the top part of the script, we declare all the textures we're going to use, namely splat map texture, base color textures, normal map textures, roughness map textures. Every texture set has its own color value, like base, which essentially means black color, red, green, blue, and alpha, and as you can see in the naming convention. Then, in the fragment function, we declare vector3 variables for our color, normal, and roughness maps, and then separate red, green, blue, and alpha values in the splat map texture and assign it to different texture sets. And in the very end, we define specular, normal depth, and clear cut gloss values. And as I have mentioned previously, I will provide a link for downloading current splat map example script in the video description. As for PBR texture sets used for the terrain, I made them by mixing my own photos that I made during hiking years ago and I just edited them out in Photoshop and then tweaked those photos a bit and turned them into tileable PBR textures in a free open source software called Materialize, which is really awesome and you should try it out. Although, similar results, or I'd say even better results, could be achieved by utilizing any other method, really. You can manually sculpt tileable materials in software like ZBrush or Blender, or you can create them purely procedurally in Substance Designer. I just wanted to do it extra fast, test how the whole system will work, that's all. And after figuring out the way our splat map shader would work in running tests, I went back to Blender and delivered some final touches to the splat map textures. And also added some alpha values to utilize additional texture set in my terrain shader. Although I have to notice I had some problems with high alpha values in my texture maps and had to tweak some things in Photoshop afterwards so that additional texture sets would render up properly in the game. So. This has been my experiment on creating an open world terrain using Blender and Godot engine, writing a simple LOD system and a splat map shader. It has been fun and quite tedious work. To summarize it all, I probably would not recommend anyone to replicate this method, as there are probably way better solutions than the one I have described step by step in this video. Although, this method is working. For example, you could utilize alternatively Zillin's height map plugin and uh, achieve pretty similar results, or probably better. As I have mentioned previously, I will share all the scripts in the link in the description section of this video, because I don't know how you may utilize them. Probably you might uh, use LOD system in some other way. Uh, so please keep in mind that I'm not a professional game player, game mechanics programmer, and I'm just studying this all out, out of curiosity and sheer fun on my own. And if you have any suggestions on how to improve the scripts or anything else in the video, I would be grateful if you could leave your comments and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.